speciality media house with brands like DataQuest, PCQuest, Voice and Data, DARE, CIOL, Global Services. He was conferred as the national, with the National Entrepreneurship Award as the best mentor by the Ministry of Skill and Skill Development and Entrepreneurship, Government of India. He's on the Investment Management Committee of the 10,000 crore fund of funds set up by the Government of India. He's the chief mentor of Electropreneur Park, Delhi and Bhuvaneshwar. He's the co-founder of India Angel Network and as an angel investor has mentored over 250 startups across various domains. He's the past president of Pan IT Alumni India and the Association of Indian Magazines. He's the recipient of Distinguished Alumni Award at IIT Delhi and I am Calcutta and the Helen Keller Award for working in the disability sector. He's an engineer from IIT Delhi, one of my beloved seniors as well, and an MBA from I am Calcutta. Mr. Prashant, Mr. Pradeep, can we please have you on the stage, sir? Wonderful having uh, you here, uh, Prashant. And, uh, you know, IIT Madras. So why don't you just share a very brief uh, sketch of till you started Ease My Trip? Till I started Ease My Trip? Yeah. After that, I'll yeah, no we'll problem. move on to another segment. Oh, you know, regular all Delhi boy. Uh, wanted to be as far away as from family, so that's why I chose IIT Madras. That was the only reason. Um, studied there for four years. I was barely at IIT Madras. Uh, my then girlfriend was in Bangalore. She was three years senior to me. So she had a job in Bangalore. So I literally, you know, stayed with her most of the time and would just go to campus to write exams. And uh, then afterwards, I got a job at Capital One, uh, directly from IIT Madras. So moved to Richmond, Virginia. Worked there for two years, um, then uh, switched to HSBC in Chicago. And then I was very sure that I want to go back and start something. And that's how Ease My Trip happened. Wonderful. So, you know, uh, your uh, profs at uh, IIT Madras, how would they describe you? Oh, they would describe me absentee. <laughs> <laughs> okay. In fact, uh, I remember this, one of the professors at Physics 101, Oh, no, not physics 101, some other professor, but physics professor. He said that if Prashant and one more person uh, attends the class, he would not take attendance and he would assume everybody's present. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. And how would your uh, uh, batchmates describe you? My batchmates would describe me as a person uh, who always was extremely big proponent of staying in India. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Almost all throughout my IIT, I would advise people to not to write GRE. And then, unfortunately, I got a job <laughs> at Capital One. The, the, almost everybody had applied for Capital One. And I was planning to not to apply for that job because I just didn't want to go out of India. And for the four years, this is what I've been telling my friends that we need to be in India. We need to create jobs in India. We need to be entrepreneurs over here. And um, then the Capital One came in and uh, my friends said that, Hona to Henny. You know, they are, everybody's going to apply and they're going to take one or two. So you, might, ho uh, so you might as well just go and in, in, enjoy the interview process. And uh, I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. Why would I get it? They only usually take one or two people. Uh, so after like 20 odd rounds of interview, which happened for two days, and you know, I was good enough in fooling them <laughs> that I deserve that spot. <laughs> and then it was too late to back out because then uh, everybody would just beat me to death uh, that I got the job and I did not go. So it would be called as RG ho jati na, pure college ko ki ek job kha gaya. <laughs> so I had to go. Okay, so now let's start with the, uh, the Ease My Trip uh, part. And you know, you are a, a person who has broken a lot of conventional uh, wisdom. So let me start off by getting into the travel business because you know, Make My Trip was already there, right? Make uh, My Trip, Clear Trip, Yatra, Exigo, <laughs> they all existed. Ixigo. So, you know, Everybody there were a huge number it. of people already there. And one of the wisdom that is always given by investors to, to startups is, oh, listen, this space is now already gone, you know? I mean, this is taken. There are so many people uh, already there. You know, pick up a new area and so on. So why did you pick up... Uh, no, it's, it's a great question and almost every time I get this question asked. Uh, basically, it's not that we chose the industry, the industry chose us. Uh, my two younger brothers are 100 times more brilliant than I am. 
while I was working in the US, they actually started a mom and pop travel agency called as Duke Travel Agency. Now, these two youngsters out of, one was in school and one was in college, started Duke Travel Agency and they managed to, you know, basically piss off uh, some people at Air Deccan. Uh, what they did was they actually hacked Air Deccan <laughs> in year 2006 and uh, or 2007. Uh, do you guys remember one rupee air ticket? Air Deccan used to do one rupee air ticket. So thanks to my two young, brilliant brothers, uh, we would get all that one rupee a ticket. Wonderful. <laughs> and then they would sell it off either on profit or they would just waste it. And people at Air Deccan got sick and tired of uh, them just taking all the tickets. So they said that, hey, if you guys are so brilliant, why don't you take North India Agency of Air Deccan? So this is how Duke Travel Agency started. And Duke Travel, Ag Travel Agency was doing decently okay because it was the entire distributorship of North India. And I'm like, this is the perfect time to go back and then we but together. But then they lost a lot of money also. Oh right? yeah, we, I mean, I lost a lot of money. <laughs> they were doing okay. <laughs> so move back to India. We said, okay, let's create a 2.0 version of Duke Travel Agency and let's start Ease My Trip, which is basically completely online and let's serve people. And oh boy, in the first, uh, in the second month of me coming back, uh, we lost 26 lakh rupees, a lot of money. That was a lot of money for a bootstrap founders like us. Um, almost the entire saving or whatever I could save in the US. Uh, we lost 20, 26 lakh overnight. And uh, I'm not going to get into detail how we lost it, but we lost it and, um, you know, I almost thought that I'm going to write to my boss in the US, sorry, <laughs> please take me back. <laughs> but then uh, sanity or insanity prevailed and uh, we said, uh, let's give it another go. And uh, since then, East My Trip has never come to a place where we were about to shut. So what did you do differently? You're number two today. So what was it? Uh... So firstly, we didn't do much differently. Firstly, in my first trip when I came back to India was actually to Bangalore. I thought, hey, I'm like a guy, IIT, US. I may be able to raise some funds, right? So Bangalore was the Makkah and Madina to raise funds. I came to Bangalore immediately after coming to India. And I thought, oh boy, I'm going to get money very easy, right? That's what my thought was. And damn, I mean, I almost got laughed out uh, in various investors' meetings that, hey, you're too late to start this. So, so many people have already started this. We have picked our bets. I remember people I met in those days, and they were right. You know, I we did not realize that how many people have come in this industry, and they have done so wonderfully well for themselves. And everybody had picked their bet. So we couldn't raise money. Uh, I, I stayed away for three, four days. And then I realized that there's no point even having a follow-up meeting. It's very clear and evident that this space is completely overfilled and oversubscribed. And then I, you know, we went back to our business. The business at that time was not... Excuse me. No, it's okay. The business at that time was not basically serving consumers, but it was actually serving travel agents. The first version of Ease My Trip was basically a software for travel agents. Since we were a travel agent ourselves, we knew how could we serve travel agents better. That was the first version of Ease My Trip. So I remember after one or two days of meeting investors, I just went about meeting travel agents in Bangalore to do my business. And for the first three years, we basically just targeted travel agents. And but. I mean, I have the honor to speak to all of you because I think we went this way. We created a product for, uh, we created basically a utility first and then we moved to the product. For the first three years, it was a B2B company and then we became B2C company. And that is how we were able to create our software, relationship with airlines, learn about the operations and then become a consumer company. Right now, 97% of our business is consumer. Almost 20 million people use us on uh, annual basis to book their flights and hotels and buses and everything. But... Um, had we started competing with Make My Trips or the likes of them in the beginning, there was no chance we could have survived. Right. So I, I actually say this often, the best way to become a product is actually to surrogate yourself into it by starting as a service first. Start as a service, surrogate yourself in, and then start competing with the products. Right, so new wisdom number one is that you can enter into a crowded space also, but pick your spot beautifully. Yeah. And if you can do that, then you can really I mean, um, I can only speak from the hindsight perspective. At right. that time, we did not know what we were doing. On the uh, now, I now I can connect the dots and can say that yes, it would have worked only this way. It could not have worked any other way. Wonderful. Okay. Now, conventional wisdom number two. 
right? Uh, which is that you do an angel round, then you do a series A, series B, uh, and more important than that, you burn money because you know until and unless you burn money, investors say, "Are you are not burning money? Something must be wrong with you, right?" That is the typical kind of a thing. But you have never burnt money after that uh, initial stage. So, uh, you know, why did you think that you need to do it differently? I mean, it's good, right? <laughs> that if we could do it profitably. <laughs> I mean, uh, the thing was that uh, we, in the first six years of Ismar trip, we had only invested 15 lakh rupees in the company. And that too, it's not like you have 15 lakh rupees. Laga diye. Uh, 5 lakh, 4 lakh, 1 lakh, 2 lakh, like that. Because we come from a humble background and that's all we could afford. So we 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 did put a little bit amount of money and the only thought process was that, you know, we cannot afford to let it go. I mean, not having a plan B is a great plan A, right? So that was something which kept us going. Uh, for the first 6-7 years, we were on zero salary. Uh, it was barely breaking even for first six, seven yeah, years. There was no temptation, at least, let's say, after three, four years to go and do an angel round. We tried multiple times. Oh, okay. Uh, till year 2015, we tried. Um, and um, I believe that people were right. We, we exist purely because of our hustle. Otherwise, uh, we were written off all this while. I have read our obituary multiple times myself. Um, you know, our competitors would start spreading this thing, right? Saying that, hey, he's my trip, he's not going to pay for it, so what will they live? When will they live? So I must have read and heard about it from the airline. Sir, you were going to be closed, right? No, we are, we are still here. So, um, after 2015, things started changing and uh, we did get quite a few VCs and PEs as well uh, who were interested in his my trip. Uh, but the business was growing at 75% annually while making profit. So, you know, I remember this very clearly that there was one VC who came to our office, understood everything in year 2015 and uh, offered us $57 million uh, check uh, for certain equity in the company at that moment. And uh, his advice was basically to go all out and use that money to basically promote Isma Trip even further. And we, we felt like that would make us be in red and we have always been in green. So we said that we accept your money. Thank you so much for this check. But we are going to put this money in the FD. And you are going to get your... <laughs> that's the best use we can do with your money right now. Uh, we are growing at 75% per annum. We don't need, feel the need to grow by 150%, 200% per annum. Um, and that's the best we could do. And he took his check and he went back. Okay, so new wisdom number two is that, you know, there was life before the, the word burn rate was uh, discovered. All right, in the mid 90s. And I think that is again a very, very old traditional wisdom that we should go back to. Okay. So, so now uh, Ease My Trip is uh, established and so on. Okay. Uh, and you do an IPO. And I think uh, one of those rare cases of startups, uh, I, I think the only example, of, perhaps I can think of one or two more examples of companies which have straight away gone and done their IPO, okay. all right? So that was yet again one uh, break which was there. You could have taken that $17 million and so on. So, you know, just share the IPO journey. See, um, again, I, I'll go back in time in year 2019. Uh, we clearly understood that a private equity or, uh, you know, an investor money wouldn't make sense for us because we are growing and we are growing profitably. So. Uh, then a couple of bankers approached us and said that, hey, I mean, you probably are very well poised to be a listed company. So why not even think about that? And uh, the the primary reason for us to go public were two, and I, I could be extremely honest around it. First is that uh, we were 100% bootstrapped, right? We we three brothers own 100% of the shares. So we had no idea of what value have we created. There is no external money which has come ever come inside. So. We did not know for the last 12 years what value have we created for ourselves, for our employees, for ourselves. So that was reason number one, why we wanted to understand what value it has been created for this matter. And second was obviously by having large number of shareholders uh, who are your well-wishers, who hold your shares, uh, also promotes the company. Right now, Ismatrip has about 6 lakh people who hold their shares. And uh, half the time people say they, they use Ismatrip, half the time people say they are the shareholders of the Ismatrip. Uh, which is a very proud feeling, right? To have so many shareholders and 
I believe I believe that they have a very good they are doing a very good job in promoting Isma Trip right now, which is telling people that why not use Isma Trip uh, instead of others, who's a homegrown company, not charging convenience fees, one of the best services, and other things. So I I I think that the uh, uh, by getting listed, we did the right thing for the company. Wonderful. And uh, uh, within uh, that year, you finished the year at eight thousand crores. Uh, and 130 crore uh, profit, right? Uh, last year, our uh, uh, GMV was 8,000 crores and profit after tax was 140 crores. 140 La crores, a big round of applause for a great uh, journey that has been uh, there. But even this year, uh, you are growing at... Okay, so before that, uh, a few, few very, uh, you know, quickies. How would your employees describe you? Oh, <laughs> they're not over here, right? <laughs> well, uh, depends, right? Uh, uh, many of my employees have seen me through various phases. And of course, uh, I wasn't born as an entrepreneur. So I am also learning as we speak. I think the first five years, I was very relentless, very task oriented, very brutal at some level. I would say the first five years. And then I did a lot of vipassana. I did a lot of <laughs> meditation. <laughs> to, to, team building uh, and to, all to got better and I uh, I found people to outsource the job to yell at people and I be the calmer guy <laughs> <laughs> so now you have an HR department uh, yeah so <laughs> now now we have other people to say things and I just go on and say nicer things so I think no overall people would say that um, I have a very high level of expectation from myself and since I have a very high level of expectation for myself it keeps people on their toes by itself and how would your shareholders describe you? Shareholders, um, I mean, yesterday this happened. I was eating Pani Puri <laughs> before coming last night. And, you know, I wanted to see how uh, Bangalore's Pani Puri is. And uh, there was a girl uh, next to me and she was like, you're Prashant Pitti, right? I'm like, yeah. Like, I'm one of your shareholders. I'm like, oh, wow, thank you. Like, thank you for making money for us. I'm like, great. <laughs> So I, I guess, uh, you know, since our share has went up by three and a half, four times since the listing, uh, people have made good money and I'm, I'm glad they did. Good. And because there are a lot of technology people here, mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, a very quick question on that. Mm -hmm. uh, what were some of the technological changes that you brought about, you know, WhatsApp, for instance, you went and so on, uh, which created a difference? And looking ahead with you know uh, gen ai coming and so on what do you think are some of the the changes over the next five to ten years that you see technology bringing about in the travel business i have a very hot take of what uh, changes we're gonna see in travel industry um and you know it could be controversial as well i believe that uh, hotel industry is going to be massively disrupted the way i see 10 years from now Specifically, hotel industry is going to be massively disrupted. Um, you're going to have, uh, you know, using quantum computers which are coming, using the AI which is happening right now. I believe that the uh, traveling salesman problem will be solved. And I'm sure many of you would be aware of our traveling salesman problem, which is not solved yet, would be solved. And with that, uh, we will basically start seeing a lot of pods which are self-driven. And these pods probably will have a bed, a coffee table, a coffee maker and you just get inside that pod and it takes you from point A to point B while you're sleeping at the night. So a lot of uh, hotels which are used for overnight stays uh, might actually uh, just vanish. Uh, a lot of hotels which are next to the airport probably won't exist uh, 10 years from now. I believe that uh, similarly, I think world is moving towards de-infrastructuralization. Uh, earlier, we had developed nations because they had big infrastructures. Now we are going to see developing nations take the leap, the next leap, because infrastructures won't even be required. That's that's what I think technology is going to do uh, in the next 10 odd years. Uh, but that's just my take. I, I have so many other takes as well. Uh, so I would rather be quiet because many of them are very con controversial in nature. Yes. My last set of uh, questions, uh, Prashant Pitti, the person. Okay, how would your father describe you? How would I? I mean, I wish he describes me me the way I want me to be described but I think uh, overall um, our parents are decently proud of us uh, we come from a very humble background and uh, you know I think uh, he feels proud to say that we have created something we are three brothers we are still working together we are still living together 
uh, overall, um, I think uh, we, we are three brothers. We all have taken very different aspect of our father. And I was telling this to my mother that I realized that our father is the best of all three. Um, what I, what my youngest brother might have taken from my father is he's extremely hardworking. Like he can work for 18, 20 hours nonstop, sleep for two, three hours and still go back to work. Uh, Rikant, extremely, extremely hardworking. Nishant, my younger brother, um, he's extremely daring. Like nobody can dare to speak in front of him. He's that kind of daring, but in a good way. He commands respect wherever he goes. And I think what I may have borrowed from my father is just being extremely high on integrity. Um, you know, I, I believe that I sleep better if somebody has to pay me, but I don't have to pay anyone. I keep all the accounts, everything extremely clear. And I just uh, wish that, you know, people treat me the way I want them to be treated. So that's, that's all. And how would your wife describe you? I don't think so any entrepreneurs why would describe them nicely <laughs> you know I'm always missing I'm not around kids I'm not around her yesterday also we had a small fight where she's like you never listen to me so that's that's probably how I know how she would describe me I hope that she describes me better behind my back but in front of me this is how she describes me <laughs> and your children Sorry? And your children? My children are uh, eight and six. Uh, they are too young uh, to know that their father has flaws. <laughs> right now they think that their dad is a superhero. I hope that I can continue uh, to make them think that way. But eventually we all find flaws in our parents. So will they. Ladies and gentlemen, Prashant Pitti.